Welcome to today's episode of The Bald Book Geek. Like, sub, do the usual. If you want uncensored versions of these videos, exclusive early access, and more, check out my Patreon page. And also, for exclusive content on YouTube, consider becoming a member. I hope you guys enjoy today's episode, and let's start the show. By the time you're watching this, you already know that the remake, reboot, readaptation, whatever you want to call it, of The Crow is a thing. And I'm going to say this. I, I love The Crow. I think it's one of the most spectacular films of its era. I think it's stylistically very important. And I love the graphic novel. But everything that's kind of come after it has fallen short. There have been a couple of films. I didn't mind City of Angels so much. Uh, I thought that was a decent, okay movie. But was it very good? No. But Salvation we don't talk about, although Kirsten Dunst is there. And Wicked, Ga uh, Wicked Prayer is... Uh, David Boreanis plays an ex convict, uh, an escaped or ex convict who is a Satanist. And I saw it once and I hated every second of the movie. It was bad. <laughs> there was a TV show, Stairway to Heaven, which was actually quite decent and very successful. And it ended on a cliffhanger, which to this day is still kind of icks me. Uh, just a little bit of film trivia the second film, The City of Angels, has the original Yellow Power Ranger in it. Just, just the thing. So that was nice to see. But, I mean, the graphic novel is a classic. But I think the new one so far just look The Crow looks like a SoundCloud rapper. I mean... And there is a whole... Thing. It, it's... Ugh. I don't know. It just screams of creative bankruptcy within Hollywood, within the system. And every film right now, every big budget Hollywood movie is either part of a cinematic universe or attempting to be, or it will have a spin-off. And there have been films that I've liked recently. I thought the Dungeons and Dragons movie was really cool. Like, I liked that movie. I thought that was really good. But on the other side of it, the thing that gets me is that we live in an age where films like Taxi Driver or The Godfather would never get made now. Hollywood is scared of any movie, I'll use the UK age rating system because it's easier for me, of anything with an 18 rating on it. Oppenheimer, probably one of the best films of the last few years, uh, got completely ignored by most people and uh, the woke-tivists on Twitter who cried that the Barbie movie was so important when really it's just a bunch of Hollywood fluff. You know, it, it, I liked the first half of that movie, the weird, surreal, self-aware humour I really enjoyed, and then the second half of the movie felt like a completely different film. There was no way around it. It was not good. And <laughs> I say this, like, no one's interested in award shows, no one's interested in the Oscars or anything like that, no one cares. Like, this, these, I think people are, I think the audiences are partly sick of being lectured by millionaires on how they should live their lives and what they should do. You know, let's do a global warming conference and climate change thing and then, you know, go there on our private jets. You know, <laughs> like, oh, you can't have a car. We'll tell you off using your car, but... You know, we're here on a private jet. Like, there is a there is a major problem that just frustrates me. Like, everything just feels generic and dead. And it's boring. That is the problem. It's boring. <laughs> like, every, like, look at the lot... I just think I can appreciate the early MCU stuff as kind of just cinematic popcorn. And I I loved it. Like, it was pure eye candy movie. And sometimes not every film needs to be this deep, 
psychological look at humanity. Sometimes it can be all about the special effects. The Island is fantastic with Ewan McGregor, for example. Watch that movie. But the thing is, every film now is either the message goes before the film, which is, I think, frustrating audiences because we're sick of being lectured like we're children. But also the hiring of problematic actors, Ezra Miller, for example, in that Flash movie, which was garbage. Although I did like the some of it. I, w I won't lie there. I did like some of it. But compared to previous entries, it was not good. But the thing that gets me is Hollywood tries to play it safe. They try and create, you know, every film must be censored. Everything, every fault must be censored. Everything must be safe. We mustn't offend the audience. We mustn't make the audience think. We, we mustn't do anything remotely problematic. And I really hate that word. With, it, it's such a corporate weasel word, isn't it? If you go back on this channel, there's an old video called problematic. The word problematic is problematic. And it's absolute crap, but <laughs> it does dis... My personal opinions are there. But the Detroit Hollywood system has created a generic thing. And when you see actors going, well, I have... They've given me this platform. You know, it's very obvious they don't care about the films they're creating. Here's your paycheck, run around in spandex, we'll be good. Like, even the deterioration of special effects. Like, say what you want about the original Avatar, but look at those special effects versus now. Like, my god. The difference is mind-blowing. And just that weird pull of... Creative dissidents, which I find fascinating. Like, these big studios hire artsy indie directors to direct... Um, to direct action movies, which they, they really shouldn't. They need people who know action movies. Like, people are bored. And whether the... The irony is, and I firmly believe this, if people weren't bored with comic book movies, with cinematic universe, with each film effectively being a trailer for the next movie, an age where the post credit scenes seems to be more important than the movie, I think these movies, as average as they were, would be far more successful because there's always room for big popcorn special effects spectacles. We need movies like that. But when you look at what's getting made and what's entering mainstream cinema, it's unfortunate. You know, you have a whole generation of people who who freak out when there's anything remotely violent or remotely this or remotely that. And it's like, okay. And these people confuse fiction with reality. Like an act of misogyny on screen is an actual act of misogyny. Which I find bizarre. Like, I see it with the Rings of Power fan base. I see it with the new Star Wars fan base. Those lines between reality and fiction for these people is not just blurry. It's downright all over the place. And I find that kind of sad. Because you just see what's going on and how it's happening and what's going on and you know it's I always say this like if you want to criticize art at least try and produce it it, it just it fascinates me no end and I find it strange to witness like people freaking out over American Psycho like that wouldn't get made now they're remaking that by the way like, they, they're attempting to do a remake of American Psycho. And all I'm saying on that film is don't do it because that's... And it's going to be set now. And literally all I'm going to say on the entire subject is don't do it. <laughs> because it doesn't need to be done. Let, let's put this one out there. It doesn't need to be done. Like, let the classic film stand for themselves. And... When Hollywood is so creatively bankrupt and like, we need to remake this for modern audiences. What, a bunch of sensitive pussies that don't really care about the film they're consuming, just that it ticks boxes? That don't know that cinema should be art as well as entertaining? Like, I know I sound pretentious 
here and even I'm hearing what I'm saying here and going, what the hell? <laughs> but like I said, there's always been room for these big budget spectacles and these big budget epic movies that are huge and shiny. Independence Day is a prime example of one. The Island is another. The Island's actually a really good sci-fi. Like, <laughs> I just want to put that one out there. Like, as a science fiction film, it's, it's effectively a remake of Logan's Run. But it's very good and it made absolutely no money. We live in an age where a film is considered more important because it ticks boxes. And if you dare criticise this movie or don't like it for really valid reasons, you're shouted at and called every name under the sun. Like, I get comments a lot. Oh, I can see where the Conservatives are hiding. It's it's never been about politics. I've never criticised a film because of politics. I've always criticised movies or liked them because of the movie. And there is a way of doing intelligent allegory that doesn't divulge from the main plot. Like, okay, controversial opinion. I really liked the Snyderverse stuff. Um, Superman, Man of Steel, Justice League, the Snyder Cut, God, not the god-awful Whedon thing, monstrosity, and Batman v Superman, the extended cut only, not the theatrical. I really enjoyed those films because they were what I needed at the time. Were they particularly deep? No, by far. If you want a very deep superhero movie, watch Watchmen. It's probably one of the greatest superhero films ever made and criminally underrated. And if it does help, the Blu-ray is region free if you do that. And I'm going to say this. When it comes to films, I ha I'm in two moods. I either want to be entertained. I love the Underworld movies, for example. Or I want to be made to think. And I feel like these are neither. Like, the best films I've seen in the last few years that are not mainstream have all been independent films, small films that have got showing in, like, one cinema or shown in... Uh, or straight streaming from, from, like, their one-night showing. And that's what gets me. Like, I don't think half... The cinema experience is awful anyway. Let's, let's be real with that. It, it's awful. And you see this stuff happen. You see this stuff... Like, last time I went to the cinema, it cost me and three friends 130 quid. And I'm not kidding with that. And that's also a reason people aren't seeing movies. Like I said at the beginning, The Crow could be the best film, but will people take a risk, or will it won't? Do, like, some of the best films of the last few years have been these small art house releases I've watched from the comfort from my living room on my 50-inch television, usually wrapped in a duvet, and I don't eat popcorn because popcorn is gross. You will never change my mind on that. And it's, it's... Like, just the creative bankruptcy of Hollywood frustrates me. Like I said, films like Taxi Drive would never get made now. Because, you know, all of this stuff. And sort of, you know, the Mar Disney Marvel's attitude towards filmmaking is special effects, put a chick in it, make it gay. Okay, but it, it's strange. Like, seeing films marketed based on the genders of the actors or the message rather than actually a film and this is a mistake like there was one person in comic books industry who was chiming around twitter and just saying i have gay representation in my book what else does your book have like what can you tell me what else your book has can you tell me anything about it other than box ticking and I see this in books too, and that's a whole, there's another video coming up, I've already got shot and I need to sort of edit, is that on my, hopefully the return of my second channel, but you can watch what went down there, uh, in the previous video, the thing that gets me is that literary fiction, not very good literary fiction, is dominated by women. 
And there are some great writers in that pool, by the way. And I want to say that. Like, there are some phenomenal female writers. But why aren't these stories being translated to screen? Why aren't they looking at things that already have an audience? Things that are actually very good. Like, genre fiction is predominantly dominated by men, and literary fiction is women, which I find quite fascinating. The gender divide in publishing and the creative industry is fascinating. Full stop. Again, separate video, and I'm not going to go on a tangent. The thing I will say is that there are so many great books. People want diversity on screen. The book is there. They want diverse fantasy to adapt into a television show. Rather than rewriting existing things and bastardizing them, i.e. The Wheel of Time or Rings of Power, why not pick up one of these brilliant diverse books uh black leopard red wolf oh my god absolutely amazing and it's 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 basically game of thrones based on african mythology and it's it's oh my god it's good it would tick those boxes in the best way possible and then i mean you can and you can always tell the casual fans of things or people that don't really know the source material. There was and it goes both ways. There was the outcry over um oh, I can't even think of what the show was called, but it was a Netflix thing. And they're like, Well, the the actor is white and he has an this name and why are they casting an actor? It's like uh guys, because that's not his body. That that's not his body. That that's it. He he's in a different body, and you see his original body. Like you obviously didn't know the book and were looking for outrage, rather than actually doing it. And it also exposes some of the hypocrisy in the industry. Like, you know, they were planning a remake, a female remake of American Psycho with um, Patricia Bateman. At one point, I'm glad that didn't happen. But I'm dreading that. I'm absolutely dreading it. Netflix are adapting The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And uh, not Netflix, Amazon. And they, I do have some hope for that, by the way. Because, you know, who's behind it is really good. But it's the darker themes of the book that I think people would have problems with adapting. Because media, right now, is scared of dark themes. They're scared of anything remotely violent. They're scared of sex and nudity and n human nature. Everything has to be sugar-coated and censored and fluffy. And it's really annoying because, you know, what, what are you supposed to do? Just out of curiosity, what are you supposed to do? I mean... As a millennial, I feel, I feel, I'm genuinely sad my generation caused so many problems. Although I am on the older side of millennial. But the, the thing that gets me is that as a creative, I want to be offended. Artists are here to disturb the peace. Great quote. Brilliant line. And... I want to be offended. I want to have every... I want to have my limits pushed. I want to have my brain pushed. I want to be made to think. I want to escape. And in an age where escapism is viewed as problematic. And I don't get that. I don't get this war on escapism at all. Because it's escapism. That is the point. I don't want to look... I don't want to be lectured on third wave feminism. I don't want to be lectured on, I don't know, the, the representation diversity of Mongolian squirrels. I want to watch a movie. I want to watch original movies that aren't remakes, that aren't redos, that aren't this, that aren't that. I just want to see new ideas, new creativity. And the thing is, people aren't tuning in. I mean, I did laugh. There was someone complaining on Instagram that we're still in... Apparently 2020 is still happening and there was all these rules they'd put in and they'd rent it out just to see the Barbie movie. And you're like, see Oppenheimer, see something with some grit, see something about reality. And that's also a thing. Like, I like past realities. I, I say escapism is a problem. 
that I love historical movies. I love things like The Aviator, for example. That's a stunning movie. Oppenheimer is on that same level. But I think this need to appease the Twitterati and make everything sanitised and sanitising culture, you know, the, the worrying precedent of editing movies to edit out things that are a censored version for streaming. I'm so glad I buy physical media. Like, I am so glad I do. It's a thing. And it just... It's just that thing of, like, I'm creative. I, I'm writing a crime novel about an obsessed fan. And it's just fascinating to witness. And just kind of... I don't know. It's just this kind of almost stripping back of culture. We must erase the past. We must make sanitize the past. And I see it with Rings of Power fans. They're desperate to make the orcs, you know, these misunderstood creatures when they're really not. And it frustrates me. Like, <sighs> it just frustrates me no end. And it's one of those weird things where it's, and I see this a lot. I, <sighs> I see this a lot. And I just, I just want a good movie. I want to turn on the cinema screen and have a good film, be it a small art house, a mainstream release. I don't want to be lectured. I don't want to be told what I should think or feel. I don't want to be lectured as, uh, as a male on why I'm wrong, which gets really annoying, by the way. Like, ugh. I just want a good movie. And why is that so hard? Like, Barbie, I have a weird relationship with because I actually enjoyed the first half of the film. It was this fun, surreal, weird movie. And then the second half could have been by, by a completely different director. And it was missing that. And it was actually quite misandrous. But it's just a weird, frustrating moment. And, you know, just a good movie. A superhero movie. A good one. Uh... A brilliant... I don't know. I, I always say this, like... Why haven't Disney learnt from... Disney Marvel learnt from the last Spider-Man? They gave the audience what they want. The audience went out and told... Said it with their wallets. And then, you know... The bot armies... Bought up by... A few people recently. And I'm sure the bot accounts are 100% real. At this point. Because there's so many bots on the internet. My god... But just create something new and original or adapt something that want, that ticks the boxes already rather than trying to cash in on popularity of a certain franchise. You know, you have a trash TV shows, trash movies, problematic actors who uh, really... It, like, if Ezra Miller was a, a straight guy, it would have just... It, that film would have been canned, let's be honest. I mean, this is how it works, and sort of the double standards and hypocrisy of Hollywood show, and I think people are bored with it. I think episodic television is the future of entertainment. Like, you can do so much more, it's like, that's that's my opinion. So, yeah, I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, like I said at the beginning, like, subscribe. Uncensored versions of these will be available on my Patreon, and there will be members-only content coming pretty soon so hopefully everything is wonderful and i hope you guys enjoyed it um what else was about to say uh I'm, i don't really have an upload schedule minimum of one video a week so we'll go from there maybe two um i have some stuff on backlog so i hope you guys enjoyed this i'll talk to you guys later bye